Okay, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, and today uh, is going to be our very first biochar burn of the year. Um, let's see, where do I begin with biochar? If you don't know what it is, it's pretty much charcoal that's made in an oxygen-depleted environment. And, uh, you know, I talked a little bit the other day about compost and force multiplication, you know, force multipliers, stuff that you do that you get more than just uh, one fold um, advantage out of it. You get multiple advantages out of it. Uh, and compost, we can, we can supercharge compost with biochar. Biochar is charcoal that we crush up and I'm going to show you today because we're we're all loaded up. One of these days, I got to get smart about this and be able to show, you know, the loading real quick and then you know make it go fast. But I'm I'm not real good at that yet. Uh, but this is the retort, and this happens to be number four retort number four. It's an old one. Um, the new one we still haven't completed it. You know, we've just been busy with other stuff. But I am planning on completing it and that's the top for it right there this one is affectionately known as triceratops uh, and we've had this for quite a few years uh, when this inner tank is full of wood and these are hardwood cutoffs um, that we get get them by the truckload uh, this is completely full um, it's very heavy I would say it's probably 600 pounds and so we have to load it in there with the front end loader which is is tedious um, it's got an open bottom on it and then we have this outer barrel that's insulated underneath this is a refractory insulation all right you can see that all the way around so what we do to get it started is we light it off right about here with just a little kindling and then this starts to burn this kindling wood will start to burn all the way around and then it will work its way down into the barrel and the refractory pushes the heat into the inner barrel and the inner barrel full of wood it has no contact at all with flame so the wood that's in there actually roasts and the uh, the distillates they call them or the volatiles come out of the wood and go down the bottom and then come up and you can see this this holes on the bottom air holes and when this thing's really rocking I'll, uh, I'll videotape it so you can see it it's it's cool at night really cool at night but we're gonna do it today because we need the char um, we needed to grind it into our feed for the chickens and stuff, but um, it really burns hard. And uh, so, anyway, this took us probably about an hour to get it loaded and ready to go. Keith is just up the house getting some paper to stuff in there to get it going. We can start it off with fuel, but we prefer to use stuff that we have, uh, so it doesn't cost us, you know, in fuel to get it going. Fuel smokes it. It'll smoke a little bit when it starts off, but when it starts to rock, it sounds like a jet engine going, and um, it burns very, very clean. At night, you can see the different color flames coming out of it, which indicates different gases that are coming off. Uh, we, on this one, we had a hole right up here. Actually, it's still hot because Keith just welded it up, but we had a hole there, and we would sometimes take a pipe out the side and when the volatiles start coming off we can uh, light them but we just need the char right now so um, we're just doing a, a run-of-the-mill standard burn uh, and we usually do you know several in the summer but um, this will give us about 200 pounds of char and then we will crush that up run it we have a little grinder that we run it through and then infuse it into our compost uh, and what it does is it it becomes inoculated with the 
uh, the biology that's in the compost and the charcoal creates uh, little hotels for bacteria and protozoa to live in and um, it absorbs quite a bit of water so it keeps them hydrated uh, when we do put compost out on the field let's say you put it out on a really hot sunny day uh, you know bacteria has a hard time it needs to be someplace where it's cool and uh, relatively cool it can't be freezing it will just go dormant it needs to be fairly cool and moist for it to thrive and, and multiply. And bacteria is the name of the game out here. It really is the name of the game. So this helps our compost and um, it has many other uses. I mean we feed it right to the animals. You'll see once I have some made and I show it to you, I'll take it right over and throw it in with the pigs and it'll be crunch, crunch, crunch. They eat it all and then they poop out black and nicely uh, inoculated biochar that's going right on the vegetable field. So it's, it's a really good thing. Um, there's so much to know about biochar. I know very little. I know enough to, uh, to make it and then use it. I know it works, but I don't know all the new in, nuances of it. If you want more information, of course, go to YouTube. There's guys that are total experts that know everything there is to know about it. <clears throat> But this is what I know. I know how to make it. I know how to use it. And that's what we do when we get outstanding results. So I'll get back at you when we get her, when we get her going. I think when she's burning real good, I'll come back on, just show it off. And then when it's done uh, this evening, we've got to let it cool off. And we uh, yank the inner retort out and we're going through it. We're looking at the char. It's really interesting because the wood comes out basically the same shape it went in, just a little bit smaller and reduced. It's very, very light and it's actually um, it's musical. When you hit it on something, it rings. It's really neat. Okay, get back to you. Bye. Okay, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres and uh, we're about uh, three in the afternoon before this thing started to gas off. I had some problems. Uh, we had, there was a bunch of soot in the bottom of it that blocked the, uh, the holes, the air holes down at the bottom. And so we just didn't get an even burn around. So we had to kind of finagle things a little bit. But it is gassing off right now. Uh, it's just not doing it evenly. And that's the gas coming off of the wood right there and it's being diverted out one of the holes because of the soot that's in the way so that gas should be going up and getting reburnt and and you know contributing to the heat um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke around in there and see if I can't get that moved but it's there it is I mean it's burning full tilt right now and hardly any smoke coming out the top. The only thing you see is that gas coming off the bottom. That is the gas coming off the wood on the inside of the tank. Remember, the, that wood is not exposed to any flame at all. Um, if you're interested in this and you don't know what I'm talking about, then you can go back in the videos. And I did, I did a video... Uh, It'll be up on YouTube, and I, it was about, uh, I had a, a dry erase board going, and I explained how this thing actually works. So you can go back and you can find that. Um, but that's about it. I mean, this isn't way too impressive. It's pretty windy out, so it's taking a lot of the noise out of it. And uh, it, didn't, it didn't go as evenly as we thought it would. I hope we get a good result. We won't know until probably seven o'clock tonight but i i'm definitely going to disassemble it tonight to see what we have and i'll be back at you then it's mark from baker's green acres okay it's mark coming to you from baker's green acres it's a quarter of nine uh this was making a lot more heat than i thought and in order to get this done while there was still enough light i had to uh push it a little bit but i made discovery along the way usually what we do is if we light one off in the morning by six seven o'clock it's cool enough you can take it and empty it out and there's not any problems the um, 
The danger is if you have embers in this pile of char, see that's a good, nice pile right there. Got a little bit more right there too. The danger is if you have hot embers in there, this is charcoal and it could just go away. And that's actually happened to me, you know. I, uh, the first load that I made, it was a 5530 retort. And I made it, I come up to the, the house to show Jill, and she said, oh, well, dinner's ready. So I had dinner, and I said, well, come down and see this stuff I made. And we went back down there, and it was gone. <laughs> and I thought, somebody stole it. But what it was, was it's still hot, and uh, it just burns up, and there's no ash left. And that's, that's why I thought the Martians had stolen it. But here it is. We, uh, we pulled this out, pulled the retort out. And then because it was still a little bit hot, hotter than we would have liked it, we uh, doused it down with water. No big deal. No big deal. We want water in it anyway because uh, we're going to crush it up tomorrow and then put it in with compost. Um, and, you know, we definitely want water in it because we want things to stay, stay uh, moist so that our bacterial uh, life will, will thrive. Now... Uh, let me pick up a piece that's done. It's very handleable. I mean, you really you want to pick it up. If I hold this just right, you can still see the grain from where the saw blade went through it, maybe. But this is light. It's uh, brittle enough I can just break it, you know, in my hand. And that would be very pure carbon you know somewhere in the high 90s percent pure and again this was made in an environment where there was actually where there was very very either none or very low oxygen and it would have to be or else this would have burnt up and um, everything that's not carbon that was in that wood is gone and uh, just to fill you in uh, we can make biochar out of anything that's carbon based and believe me my kids have done the experimenting you know uh, somebody ran over a woodchuck on the road and they biocharred him somebody we had some dead chickens one time biocharred him um, I had a pile of bones from when I used to butcher cattle here uh, a huge pile we biocharred them and makes very, very dense biochar. Okay, now I told you that the animals like this stuff. So, let's, let's show you. Let me take a bunch of pieces of it. Animals haven't eaten tonight. I'm a little late getting things going, but here I got a fistful of it. These guys still have feed on the ground. These are about some 60 pounders. Let's see what they do with it. Here you go, boys. Hear the crunching? Did I call that one right or what? Very good, very good. Now, they're not the only ones that will eat it. If I take it over and give it to chickens, they'll eat it too. But I got a group over here that are bigger, older pigs, and more hungry. And let me take some over to them. This should be more fun watching them do it. Got a couple of big pieces here. There's a nice big piece. kind of wonder why animals would want to eat carbon. I, 
I guarantee you, if you came to my house and I had a bowl of this stuff sitting on the kitchen table and we were sitting there, when I got up and walked away, you'd take a piece of it and nibble on it. I've done it. Okay. Here they come. All right. Here they come. All right, well, I guess that's the proof of it. Wow, you should see the sky. Look at that sky. I don't know if it's showing up on here as good as it's showing up on me. Okay, so what I'll do with this stuff tomorrow is uh, I'll run some of it through a grinder and then put it in that finished compost pile right there. That one right there. <clears throat> And then pick it up with the loader and mix it around a little bit. And then a lot of it will go out here on this produce area. Right? And like uh, this load, I, I estimate 200 pounds. I think it's more than that. It's more like 300 right there. And what I learned this time was pull it out while it's still hot and you don't lose any. If we let it sit in there until it gets cool... I think we're losing some. That looks like a much bigger load than what we're used to. And the reason I pulled it out was because I said I would show it to you, and I figured that there's people that are probably waiting with bated breath to see the biochar as it comes out. So there it is, and I think I'll do that from now on. I won't wait overnight. I'll get it out and get it wetted down so it doesn't burn up on me. Mission accomplished. It's Mark from Baker's Green Acres. Remember, anyone can farm.